Hey guys, it's Chris from Steed and today's an exciting day. We have a Mach 1 handling pack here. We're going to do a quick walk around and a driving review to let you know our driving impressions on it and ultimately some of the parts we've added to this car as well. So without further ado, let's get driving. Now the Mach 1 has been out for a while at this point. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's been almost a year. Uh, but with that said, you guys probably have a pretty good idea of what the Mach 1 is and how it all works, but the handling pack is what makes this one special, specifically the splitter. The splitter on this thing is super aggressive. Now, the base Mach 1, as you've seen with our Twister Orange car, has this front chin spoiler, but it doesn't have the splitter, and that's because this car has the handling package. Um, definitely sets it apart, adds a little bit more downforce. In addition to the swing in the back with the gurney flap, they said that they needed a little bit more downforce up front to outweigh the additional downforce that you're going to be getting off the swing in the back. But uh, let's skip right to the pinnacle of the handling package, and that is these handling pack wheels. They are absolutely stunning. They are 19 by 10 and a half in the front, 19 by 11 in the rear. These beautiful, they, they said that they designed them off kind of a bird's nest. Um, I can definitely see it in this style wheel. I will say, definitely, if you get this handling package for yourself, definitely ceramic coat these wheels because uh, it's gonna save you a ton of time in cleaning them. I cleaned them personally yesterday, it took a while, uh, but it's definitely worth it because man, do they look good. Now, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires all the way around. You got a 305 in the front and a 315 in the rear for ultimate grip and traction. Um, it has a revised Magnaride calibration as well as tweaked traction control, stability control, all that sort of stuff um, to, you know, again, bring that handling package up a bit from the base Mach 1. Um, I would love to see how this thing compares to a Steeda Mach 1. Hint, hint. What do you guys think? Comment below. But uh, we'll keep moving around the back. Again, they have the uh, carbonized gray um, mirrors as well as the spoiler in the rear that all Mach 1s get. Uh, Recaro seats on this particular model. Um, and then ultimately the swing in the back of the car with that gurney flap. I mean, all in all, man, this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful car. Really excited to see how it drives, especially in comparison to a GT350R. We've had had some time behind the wheel of a 350R, a little bit more raw, a little bit more visceral of a feeling. Um, so it's definitely gonna be interesting to see if this is any more tame, um, especially with actually pretty darn big tires and uh, a revised Magnaride calibration, everything like that. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when we jump in the car. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood, show you a little bit of the differences that you'll see on the Mach 1 in comparison to a regular GT. We do have the Steeda hood struts on this car, definitely a little bit easier than the prop ride you get from the factory. But all in all, um, this essentially is what you got on a 2019 and 2020 Bullet. Um, what separates this from a GT is it's still the 5 liter, yes, uh, but you get the GT350 intake, the GT350 throttle body, and the 350 intake man manifold, which bumps horsepower to 480 at the crank. Uh, on a automatic car, I want to say we saw 409, 410. Um, in sixth gear, so it should be a bit higher um, in, in seventh gear on the automatic cars. So now this particular model is a stick car. Um, we won't be able to get this on the, this one on the dyno this time, but again, comment below. Let us know if you want us to throw the manual Mach 1 on the dyno to see if it makes any more power, any less power than the A10. But uh, pretty excited to get behind the wheels, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, 2021 Mach 1 handling package. Finally behind the wheel of this thing. Um, I've been behind the wheel of a few Mach 1s, but super excited to have the Tremec uh, with the Mach 1, that combo. Um, haven't driven it yet before, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to feel this particular transmission, which came out of the GT350 with the Mach 1 engine, that 480 horsepower derived from the bullet. Um, let's get started. Now, right off the bat, I do feel the difference. Um, we added our clutch spring to this car. Definitely a little bit stiffer. Um, yeah. But, uh, 
yeah the white cue ball that's a nice nice little addition this particular mach 1 does have the cloth ricardo seats um <clears throat> I'm personally a fan of the leather, but uh, when it comes to performance, I mean, you want the handling package. Got to have the car, the cars to back it up, but uh, don't necessarily need the leather for all the performance benefits that you'd get with the handling package. It's kind of a have your cake and eat it too thing. Um, but let's go ahead and see how this thing feels. Match downshift. Yes, that's awesome. Didn't even have to tap the gas. Now these do have the sticky Pilot Sport Cup 2s. So if you do plan to get a car like this for yourself, plan on getting another set of wheels and using these for track days because daily driving on this combo well, you're going to eat up your tires really darn quick. Um, now, this car does have our X-pipe installed. So, I'm pretty excited to see what it sounds like in comparison to the H-pipe, we, which we've installed on a couple Mach 1s already. I think this is the first one we installed here at our Valdosta location in... A mock. Now, I'll be honest, coming from a GT350 into this car, you do feel a little bit of the power difference. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're down 0.2 liters on displacement. You don't have that 8,000 red line um, that you can really wind it out. Um, but I guarantee you, you can make up a lot of that difference in power with a proper tune. Um, you know, a cold air intake or something along those lines. Uh, if you're NTE 85 and going down that route, um, super easy on these direct injection coyotes. Um, you'll be able to make up that power pretty quick and probably pull on a 350 at that point, even in a stick car. Um, the automatic cars, they're already just as fast. So if you're concerned about that, um, won't be but uh the digital gauge cluster and this combo i mean looks and feeling you know everything how it looks and feels is important too um you know you're, you're spending good money on this car you want something that not only performs well uh but also looks the part and feels the part too and um even with i kind of forgot that these are cloth seats because i have this you know leather wrap steering wheel the digital dash um all these nice appointments uh in front of you versus you know looking from side to side yeah okay cloth seats whatever um but uh all in all i am excited to kind of be behind the wheel of one of these mostly because it's similar to performance package too but you get the the track goodies too you know you get the coolers up front it's got a more aggressive splitter. X-Pipe sounds good on these. Definitely a little bit more higher pitch, a little bit more exotic. Um, but uh, if you're looking for the old school muscle car sound, then the H-Pipe's the way to go. But if you're looking for that, um, you know, more exotic, um, that higher pitch, um, I guess you can say more modern sound. Um, the uh, the X Bastida X pipe is definitely the way to go on these um, if you're looking to chop up your factory exhaust. And frankly, that's about all you need. Um, the factory tips on these cars 
already look awesome. You already have the active exhaust, so you can make it quiet if you want, which we'll mess around with that. So we're in sport right now. Track. Normal. Not much different, honestly. Quiet, definite difference. Yeah, it's silent. So you really do get the best of all worlds when you when you do chop off that resonator and either go with our X pipe or H pipe. Um, I will also add that um, the owner of this car added the um, stop the hop kit as well. So you get those uh, bushing support system, you get the alignment kit. Um, I believe he added our vertical links as well. Um, our IRS braces. Um, in reality, I mean, you're you're going to be able to put that power down just a little bit better. And frankly, you might need a little help with that. Um, with the factory cup twos, they're not really known to be a a straight line kind of uh, tire. Um, they're a road. I mean, they're a road race. They're a handling tire, and that's what the hand. It's called a handling package, of course. So um, if you're looking for a way to be able to get that power down a little bit more, reducing the deflection in that rear subframe is gonna be imperative for that. This Tremec shifts like butter. I'm in love. Not to knock the MT82. There's definitely a couple mods out there that can help you fight some of those MT82 issues, but it's Tremec, man. Like, if you're a stick shift person, you enjoy the the feeling you get being connected to the car. Not to knock the 10 speed. It's fast as heck in a straight line. Um, you know, our silver bullet, <laughs> that's a perfect example of what that 10 speed transmission is capable of. And I mean, even in the Mach 1, 2, in bone stock form, we were able to get a 12.0, and that was in South Georgia summer heat. Um, but the direct engagement that you get with this Tremec, it's just an awesome feeling. It's very well controlled. Um, I definitely, we just went over some train tracks. You barely even felt them. And I'm in sport mode. Um, I'm kind of surprised how smooth it is. Um, I drove a Performance Package 2 before. Um, I've driven a, a GT350R. And the 350R is definitely uh, more raw. Um, yeah, a little bit more of a rough ride. Uh, but this is actually quite comfortable. Um, now, I'm sure the Magnaride calibration in this car is different than what you would get in the 350s, but... I do like the feeling you get of this Magnaride um, with the dual rate springs. After feeling what that, that's like on the Mach 1 with the dual rate springs and the Magnaride calibration for the Mach 1, they really complement the, that combination really well. Um, we tested that out on the firm with our Twister Orange um, R&D car, and you can see the you know uh, those results in the videos on our YouTube channel. But I'm pretty impressed with this in stock form. It's well dampened. Not much drone. Little bit of drone um, with the X pipe in track mode, but you put the sucker in normal you don't hear any drone at all at highway speeds. We're doing 65 mile an hour right now. And just as quiet as stock. So you really can have your cake and eat it too with this, uh, with this resonator delete combination. 
rev match downshifts are cool. Not granted a lot of that's tires, but at the same time, that Magna Ride's well dampened, you know, the right spring rates for the factory. But if you are looking to take it to the next level, yeah, those Cup 2s are picking up some gravel. Um, but if you are looking to take it to the next level, you know, adding those, uh, you know, the Magna Ride Sports Springs, for those that are wondering, those are two viable options for the Mach 1 with the Magna Ride that obviously they come standard with Magna Ride. But it is impressive what this car is able to do in stock form. Jeez. But yeah, the difference between the Magnaride Sports Springs and the Dual Rates, Magnaride Sports Springs, they still have a lot of those handling benefits, but they're a little bit more geared towards the looks. Um, they drop the car a little bit more than the Dual Rates do. Um, they're more more like your standard progressive spring that you kind of get get the benefits, all the benefits of lowering your car the looks, the performance, and everything else. Um, whereas the dual rates don't necessarily lower your car as much, but you get that um, that unparalleled dual rate spring feeling where progressive spring, you have that range of spring rates um, where you know you have your softest rate and your, and your stiffest rate. And as the spring compresses, you work your way from one rate to the other. So there's almost infinite amount of spring rates within that range as you're going through a corner, um, which makes the car a little bit less predictable. Um, whereas a dual rate spring, you have your primary rate and your secondary rate. At a particular point, you go from your primary straight to your secondary, which means in cornering, you're going to get the fullest benefit because you know that what the car is gonna do at that one spring rate, you don't have different spring rates in each corner of the car all at different times when you're trying to go through a corner and you're on the gas and you know, you're making a right hand turn and, but all your weight is on the left rear wheel. Uh, but you know, you're braking and then you're accelerating and the, all the point is all four wheels are doing different things at the same time as you're going through a corner. No two wheels are doing the same thing on either side of the car. So having that dual rate spring, it's going to make things more predictable and a lot more pleasurable of a driving experience when you are taking those twisties, taking those back roads, or ultimately taking this car on track because that's what the handling pack's built for. Um, so we'll go around one more time. Tremic shifts like butter. Amazing combination from the factory. Amazing. If you ever get the chance to drive one of these, especially back to back with a regular Mach 1. Definitely more handling focused. If you're a drag racer, sure get the handling package, but expect to get a different set of tires, different set of wheels. Amazing. 
Amazing. And the brakes, I haven't really talked about those. And I'll be completely honest. <laughs> the brakes on the Mach 1, are they impressive? Yeah, yeah, they're GT Performance Package brakes. Um, they, they do the part, they, they're perfectly capable on track. Are they the 350 brakes? No, they don't have the aesthetics of the 350, but they're just as capable. Um, you know, so are you missing out by not having the 350 brakes on the Mach 1? No, not at all, not at all. Especially when you toss the right pad compound, depending on what you're trying to achieve with the car. You know, our friends at Hawk Performance, you've probably seen that video on our YouTube channel, um, going down the different pad compounds on these cars. Um, you're really, really gonna be able to dial this car in for exactly what you wanna do if you get, you know, the right pad compound, whether it's the DTC compounds for the track, um, or if you plan on it just being a street car and you want a slight upgrade, Performance Ceramics is the way to go. Um, as long as you don't mind dust. If you do mind dust, then HPS 5.0. But again, if you want more information on that, go ahead and then tap that link in the top right-hand corner for a card that'll show you the video um, going over all of those street compounds and tra com track compounds from Hawk. Um, but that's about it. I mean, this car is absolutely amazing out of the box. Really excited to get some more parts on this car so we can really get a feeling for uh, what the handling pack's capable of um, with a couple extra Stita parts and, uh, added to the package. Stop the hop, you definitely felt a um, little bit more control in the rear end of this car. Um, but uh, all in all, amazing package from Ford and the Ford Performance guys. Hats off to them on this particular car. Um, with that said, comment below. Let us know what you want to see from this car um, or any other Mustang for that matter or Ford. Um, we would love to hear your thoughts. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, so you get a notification on your phone next time a state of video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.